Recently, the Unreal Engine 5 was shown off through a Matrix demo, guys. And when I tell you the difference in real life and video game, that line is continually getting more and more extremely thin. Now, I know what you're gonna say. What does that have to do with Dragon Ball? Because it's an anime, it's not real life graphics. Well, there's a lot coming within the Unreal Engine 5 that it that is gonna extremely benefit us through Dragon Ball games. So take like Goku and Ultra Instinct that subscribe button, just react on it. Hit the subscribe button and hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And comment down below, what is the one feature in any Dragon Ball game that you would like to see improved? And your comment could be featured on the next video. So with the Unreal Engine 5, one thing people have to understand, first and foremost, is that all of the Dragon Ball games are made on the Unreal Engine 4. Yes, so they're using that engine already, the Unreal Engine 4. But the jump from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5, from what I've seen and from what I've learned, is similar to the jump from a PlayStation 3 to a PlayStation 5. That's a pretty big jump when it comes to gaming. Now what you could see in your Dragon Ball games that will be improved are things like beam clashes will be even more epic. Charging your key will be more epic. Key blasts will be off the charts epic. Melee clashes, the combats, the destruction caused by the fights will be off the chain. I mean, you we love knocking people through mountains and things like that, but picture knocking somebody through a mountain and that mountain stays destroyed or you can see it crumbling in the background and you can see the smoke from the, the mountain being destroyed constantly rising within the background. Not just a cut scene, but something that's almost real time. Picture Vegeta firing off those rapid key blasts that he does and your opponent knocking them away and remember in the cartoons and in the, in the anime in the background you would see all these different explosions and things like that and you would see the smoke from it continually rising things like that will become possible with the Unreal Engine 5 your beam clashes instead of just the beams just sitting there just back and forth back and forth you're gonna be able to see things like the wind and the sheer force from those blasts being shown in gameplay. And not only that, but the destruction, any destruction caused on the ground and things like that would be there and it would stay there. And it's done through the Unreal Engine 5's nanotechnology where basically it allows them to have things in the game operate individually. And because of this, guys, it makes things like this possible we will get some of the most realistic type Dragon Ball things that we've never seen before in a video game. We've seen bits and pieces of it. I mean, in Fighters, you can knock away a Key Blast and it goes into the background, you know. In Kakarot, you can fly through a mountain, but once you repopulate into that area, the mountain's back, you know. You can knock them into the ground and you see the effects of that, but what happens as soon as you do that? Same thing in Xenoverse it just repopulates back into the regular map. With the Unreal Engine 5, things like that won't happen. The closest example in a Dragon Ball game that I've seen with that is in Ultimate Tenkaichi. Whenever you do fire a Key Blast, a Super Attack or something, there's either a crater there or there is a, 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 like a beam where the beam was blazing through the ground and you're able to fight within that crater. But what the difference between that and the Unreal Engine 5 is it's not going to be like a scene change, if, if that if that makes sense. The way that they did it in those older games, they basically created a scene change. Just like in the Budokai series, whenever you see somebody do an ultimate attack and it goes and it shows the earth and an explosion and then you come back and then like there's just destruction everywhere. No, no, no. Those are scene changes. With the Unreal Engine 5, the, the capabilities that it's going to provide is it's not gonna be necessary to change the entire scene to simulate that destruction. It's going to be real time. It's going to be there. And I think that is so cool and so exciting to see. Remember watching Dragon Ball, when they are charging their key, the rocks are flying up, the ground breaks and crumbles up and stuff like that. 
And in some games, we have elements of that, but what happens? The ground goes back to normal as if nothing ever happened. With the Unreal Engine 5, things like that won't happen. You'll have those boulders flying up and they'll stay flew up. Like, this is going to change how we play Dragon Ball games. People that love Xenoverse and the Battle Royale thing, with the nanotechnology and stuff that's in this game, you'll, you'll be able to have true raid battles, guys. Like, it's going to elevate everything. And, and games like Kakarot will take advantage of the stuff that I previously explained. So all in all, this is going to be a very interesting thing. I know people wonder why Bandai hasn't put the current Dragon Ball games with a next gen upgrade. I've wondered that myself. Kakarot came out, there is no PlayStation 5 upgrade, which really guys and truly what it would do, it would slightly improve the graphics and frame rate and the overall fidelity of the game. So like it wouldn't add new features to the game. And that thing, that does cost money. So it makes sense to some degree, but I truly believe that Bandai is waiting because the Unreal Engine 5 will, I think it will become available to developers in February of, of this, this upcoming year. And when it does, don't be surprised to hear a brand new Dragon Ball game be announced. Now, I know what you're gonna say. Dragon Ball The Breakers has already been announced. That's a filler game, guys. That's not even a $50 game, and that's not a major product for Bandai Namco. The game won't even be a full price game. I'm thinking between the $20 to $35 range, $39 range. It's not going to be a full price game. It's not meant to be one of those types of games. It's really more on the lines of a free to play game, but because they want to make money, they're not going to make it free to play. It's an extension of Xenoverse 2, if you will. So it's not the major Dragon Ball game that everybody is sitting and waiting for. We're waiting for that big time Dragon Ball Super game. And I'm gonna be honest what I believe. I believe Kakarot was more or less of a test, similar to how Xenoverse 1 led to Xenoverse 2. The next Dragon Ball game we'll get would probably be similar to Kakarot, but because it takes on Dragon Ball Super, they're gonna utilize some multiplayer features in it that, that will be able to do things like the Tournament of Power and maybe create different universes, different fighters and things like that. I think they kind of mold the creation element from Xenoverse into something like Kakarot because remember in Dragon Ball Super, there's other universes out there and I think that they actually will explore that. And I think that would actually be pretty cool to be able to play through the regular story, but then have sort of a multiplayer element where you can basically create your own universe or create characters within a different uh, universe and go through the tournament of power and stuff like that. Because like I said, with the Unreal Engine 5, things like that will be possible because there's just infinitely more things they can do within this engine. Guys, I'm gonna put a link to this Matrix demo in the description box down below so y'all can go see it and kind of check this stuff out for yourself if you haven't. If you have a next-gen console, download this. It's completely free. Play it. I mean, looking at it on YouTube does it no justice. You gotta look at it on your own TV, man, because it is awesome. But that's all I got for today, guys. I got some interesting content coming up. I definitely wanna dive deeper into uh, the possibilities of what the new games could be like and things of that nature as well as continuing the dragon ball discussion videos got a real good one coming up as well so that's all i got for right now guys i appreciate y'all for tuning in have the best day you can till next time thanks for watching peace